day to day by His grace.
thankful that he's so good to us. Amen. Let's look at Matthew as the kids go down, or Mark chapter number 9. Mark chapter number nine. The uh, lots of transitions going on today. Uh, we are uh, some of us are transitioning from a t-shirt to a, a sweater. Finally, <clears throat> um, I'm still holding out. Amen. T-shirts and shorts as long as I can wear them. I'm not giving in. But I am thankful that we had some snow this morning. Because if it's going to be cold, it might as well snow. Otherwise, other, otherwise let it be May, right? Amen. Um, I do want to say thank you to those that, are, that served in our military and are currently still serving in our military. Uh, nothing that we could do would be possible without you. And we're very thankful that you sacrifice it and commit your life and your family to uh, that calling. Um, we are talking about being committed, and there's no one more committed uh, or no um, example of commitment greater than those of our uh, veterans in our country who, while everybody else is running, they're running in, right? And uh, <laughs> we, we were talking about... Um, uh, a couple of months ago, we were doing the um, uh, color wars, and Sydney bought these paint markers, and and they were pink, and they were blue, and they were she wrote them on this that bl those black marker, whatever they are, and uh, we come in here the next day, and she goes, "Oh, the colors ran," and I said, "Should have chose red, white, and blue. <clears throat> those colors never run." Hey, ma'am. Hey, man. <laughs> But look with me, if you will, to the book of uh, Mark chapter number 9. We've been talking about commitment. I say this, God told me this. He said, show me your commitment by your consistency. And uh, I've been praying that I personally uh, am more consistent in all that I do in my fellowship of Him. And uh, over the last few weeks, we've answered three questions, or two questions. We're going to answer the third today. The last, or two weeks ago, we answered, why should I commit? Because we discovered that life is a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. You don't, you're not guaranteed. Amen. You've got children. You should know that with every day, they grow up. And you've only got so much time to invest in them. Just like them, you should know that your days are numbered. And we have to invest them the right way. And we, last week we looked at how, uh, how should we commit. We talked about the little lady and how she just left her, button, her bucket. So all of her safety and security was wrapped up in that bucket. Every week she would go back to the same well. Now she left her bucket behind and was going to the internal well, Jesus Christ, for everything that she needed. Now this week we're going to take a look at this question, where will commitment take us? Where will commitment take us? So let's stand for the reading of God's Word as we look together at where it will take us. It will take us somewhere higher. The Bible says this, in verse number 9, G, or verse number 1, I'm sorry, uh, it says this, Verily I say unto you that there be some of you, or some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Does not say the kingdom of heaven, talking about the kingdom of God. After six days, Jesus takes, taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. 
And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth could whiten them. And there appeared unto him Elias, and uh, with him Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered, I, I got this underlined under my, my uh, under, under this Peter answered. Who, who was asking a question? Like, uh, like who, who said, Peter, hey, you, what do you think about this? No, he just answered. Uh, uh, he and said it to Jesus, Master, is it, or it is good for us to be here. And let us make, for the, uh, make three tabernacles, for one, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And for he wist not what he was saying, for, uh, they, uh, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And suddenly... When they had looked round about them, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with them, with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man was risen from the dead. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us, Lord. I pray that you would move this morning. God, there's so many people here today uh, who are looking for something. And God, it's all wrapped up in you. I pray that we commit ourselves on a level that we've never done before to see you in ways that we've never seen you before. Lord, I pray that you'd empty me of self and sin, fill me with your spirit because it's the Super Bowl. And I pray that together, Lord Jesus, we leave, no doubt. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Verse number 2 tells us some, some, some things that, are, that, that we all need to understand here. Number one, we all need to understand that not everybody got to go on the journey. Did you hear that? Not everybody was allowed to go where Jesus was taking them. He took Peter and James and John. Hmm. You see, these three were hand-selected to see something that no one else did. There was no mention of a conversation that took place. There was no test that would say, well, this one must be the one who needs to go with me. There was no, there was no uh, Peter, James, and John never looked at Jesus and said, where are we going? How long is it going to take and how are we going to get there? He never once did they ever say anything about that. Literally all that happened was is that when Jesus took them, they followed Him because they were committed to Him. Woo. Man, some of you. Let me just go ahead and say this. Tell your face you're happy this morning because you don't look very happy. Amen? Amen. You need some face softener today. Because some of you look downy. Amen? No. That was a good one. I was sitting over there. I thought it would hit better than that. But you are so down, you can't even see good humor. Mm. Yeah. But you see here, they were completely committed to following Him. And I want you to notice this. Notice, uh, notice first and foremost that it was Jesus that took them there. Mm. He will not show you where He's going. He's just going to take you there. The biggest problem in most of us in our lives is that we want Him to show us where He's going. We say, where are you taking me? Because we don't completely trust that He will take us where we need to go. So we ask the question, where are you taking us? Hopefully, we, we get a little softer here. Not only does Jesus take them, but He's also leading them. He's going with them. He's walking in front of them, taking them. Where else? Are they, where is He taking them? He's taking them into a place of seclusion. Let me say this. The journey that Jesus takes you on won't always be a popular place. 
there will not always will there be other people going with you. Let me just say it like this. Some people can't go where you're going because they did not get chosen by Jesus to go there. The only people that was confirmed to go there was John, James, and Peter. Andrew didn't get to go, did he? Thomas was doubting that he could get there, couldn't he? Wasn't he? Philip couldn't make it. Judas was hanging out uh, asking somebody how much money it cost to get there. Amen? Only people who could go was Peter, James, and John. So it was a place that was a secluded place. They were only there by selection. So the question then goes, where did Jesus take them? The Bible says in verse number 2, up into a high mountain. It was on this mountain that Jesus would show them that no man, uh, so, uh, something that no man had ever seen before, that only a few had ever heard before, and He was going to have to take them there so that they could see it and experience it for themselves. He was taking them higher. Listen, I don't know about you this morning. I, I can't tell by your face this morning how you really want to go. But I am here to say uh, at 1061 Fairhaven Drive, my home place, uh, this guy right here who sits in the lazy boy chair and reads his Bible every morning, he came to go higher. I do not want to be one of the ones who's staying in the upper room when I could be walking up the hillside seeing something that nobody else has seen before, hearing things that nobody else has ever heard before. I don't know about you, but I think it's time that we pack up our stuff and follow Jesus wherever he wants us to go commitment commitment he he said if you really want to go you're going to have to commit like you've never committed before see what happens preacher when we commit to letting Jesus take us higher number one if you're writing this down verse two and three tells us that our vantage point of him changes look and after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them and his raiment became shining and exceeding white as snow as no fuller on earth can whiten them so Jesus led them up to a mountain. This mountain was Mount Hermon, if you want to do your, your homework on it. It is located in the area of Dan. It, in the old, you, y'all want the tribe Dan would have been the, the, the people who run that. It was a, uh, a city that was surrounded, uh, uh, or it was a mountain that was surrounded by cities. And the closest city was uh, Caesarea Philippi, or Philippi. And, and you could, this this mountain would tower over them. It was so high up that even in the middle of summer, the snow capped the mountain. The runoff, the snow when it melted down would run all the way down and people will capture that because it was pure and always cold. Hmm. Now, when we read this text, we picture this little short, itty-bitty, Campbell's Creek loving mountain. Amen? Just some little old hillside that probably took 15, 20 minutes to get to the top. But Jesus took them to a very high mountain. You say, what's that mean, preacher? That means that He took them up into a place that it would take time to go to. But ain't nobody got time for that, do they? You Listen, I'm talking to people who, mm, who beep at people in front of them at Taco Bell because it took three minutes longer than it should have to make their bell burrito. Amen? Y'all think I... Y'all, mm. That's what Siri reckons. Amen? I mean, we can't, listen, it takes us too long to wash our own car, so we go down the road, get in line, let somebody else wash it because it's faster. 
You said, preacher, how do you know? Because I do it too. Well, now I don't want to get hot and sweaty. When someone else will do it for me. Jesus said this, I'm going to take them higher. It's going to take time to get there. So just imagine the terrain that they would go through as they would go up with the ro- uh, through the rocks and the roots and, and, and all of those things that would lay in front of them as they, they would go up that mountainside and, as steep as it could be and, and they, the jagged rocks as they stuck out the edges and they would go up and higher they went, the, the muddier the mess that became of it and the trail would disappear and they would walk on places that other other people had ne- mm, that other people had never walked before, and they'd go in places and areas that that never been seen, a uh, uh, foot had never seen before, and it would get slickery and, and and icy, and and it would get a little loose underneath their feet. But they kept going up, up the mountain top, up the mountain top. Jesus would lead them up. I find it amazing that in the Bible, when Jesus is in the lead, you only find that he leads up. For all my independent fundamental King James Bible believing Baptist camp meeting preachers who want to steal this sermon, I'm going to give you another tool. In the Old Testament, right before rebellion hit in the children of Israel, every time you find them going down, Jesus only leads up. Our understanding only takes us down. Oh, let me do it again. Jesus only leads us up. Our understanding, our rebellious nature, our commitment to self only takes us down. You say, preacher, I can never connect to Jesus the way that I really want to connect with Him. It's because you are operating by your own understanding and your own mentality and it's leading you down to the ways of Egypt. The closer you get to Egypt's land, the closer you get to slavery in sin. The closer you allow, the the more, Brother Skip, you allow Jesus to take you, the closer you get to a heavenly freedom. Jesus said, I'm taking them up, up, up. I found this to be true. Whenever you get to where you're going, it's always nice to see where you've been. I'm going to tell another hiking story on myself. I went to, I had a, uh, <laughs> a greater Swiss mountain dog that uh, Miss Sandy took over uh, <laughs> the care of. But when he was a puppy, I don't know if you've ever heard this story. When he was a puppy, I, I got into this kick that I was going to be a woodsier man. Because I had a dog needed to go in the woods so I took this big giant he he when he was born he was the size of a beagle full grown I mean his feet was as big as my hands at birth and I'm like I got three weeks into having this thing I said I'm going to go for a hike come on champ let's go so I get him and we start hiking up the hillside (laughs) and that little puppy's giving it all he's got and he's falling over everything Next thing I know, I'm falling over everything. Me and him's just sitting there falling together. And I'm pulling him. Sometimes he's pulling me. And then all of a sudden, we, we start getting on some real tough terrain. And I look at Champ and I said, Bud, let's go home. I've got bologna for me and them little pepperoni sticks for you, bro. You ready to go? Uh uh-uh. uh. He keeps pulling me. I want to go higher. So we keep going. And we keep going. Finally, as I'm following him, we get to the very top. And I kid you not, we get to the top. He turns around and sits his 75-pound body at three months old down. I said, well, let's keep going. Nothing. I said, you're going to make me carry you down. 
That's how he talked. This is his voice. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, I ain't carrying you. So I sat down. And I turned myself back to the trail. And I looked at the terrain that we just covered. And I, mm, I looked at all the rocks that I laid on as I crawled up behind him. I looked at the mud that I slipped on. I, I could even see. Have y'all ever done that? Look behind you and seen where your foot had slipped out from under you and the Lord had left a print just to remind you that you aren't very graceful? So I'm looking down and I see all of the sticks and all of the briars and all of the stuff that me and my dog, literally, me and my dog's been with, has been with me, went all the way to the top of them. And I looked and I was like, how did we get here? And I stood up and I looked over and there was a clearing behind me. And I got to see more than the path that I was on. I got to see all of God's splendorous glory as where His hand had painted for me to see. You say, Preacher, why are you saying that? Listen to me. Because when you go up with Jesus, it's going to be hard. I'm not a TV evangelist. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not trying to get your money. I'm here to be honest with you. When you walk with Jesus and you allow Him and you commit yourself to going further than you've ever went before, it's going to take you through places you've never been before. And it's going to get slippery. It's going to get hard. It's going to get messy. But He's going to take you up there. And He's going to allow you to look back and see all of what you've been through. He's going to make you 75 years old. With your, your hand on that little lady's hand. And he's going to let you look back at all them, all them times that you just didn't get along. And all those times where you hit, whenever you bumped heads and, and you got mad at each other, but you kept hanging on to each other. He, he'll let you look back and see that it was worth it to fight for each other. He'll let you see it. He'll let you see all the times when you thought you didn't have enough in the bank to make it another day, but He gave you enough to get you through the rest of the week. He'll let you see it. He'll let you see things that you did not know that you were experiencing that He had already taken care of, and He took you higher and higher and higher, and He'll put you up on that plane. But not only will He do that, but He'll also, he'll also let you see Him like you've never seen him before. The Bible says that it was there that Jesus was what? Transfigured. The Greek word is metamorpho. It means this. <laughs> a change of form or appearance. Jesus took the definition and said, watch this. I'll put them both together. Because he changed his form. He took, mm, he took off humanity for a moment and put on glory. <laughs> and then the Bible said that he changed his clothes. His appearance changed and he began to shine. Whiter than any fuller. That means wider, <laughs> wider than any cleaner can make clean. Wow. And there he is in front of them. And they've seen him like they've never seen him before. I've noticed this, that through the hardest time of my life as Jesus is leading me, I've found that he is so much more in my life. I don't know what you're going through today, but I am here to tell you this. Where he's taking you, you're going to see him on a level that you've never seen him before. Let's go on. Look at verse number uh, 4 and 5, 6, 7, and 8. I didn't know I was going that far, but let's go ahead. You see, if you want to, if you've never seen him shine like that in your life, like he does on the mountaintop, then you're going to have to commit to him to go higher. Do you want to go higher today? Let's look at this verse number four. 
Verse number four, we're going to find, four through eight, we're going to find that your perspective of him is clarified. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. For uh, he wist not what, he, what to say, for they were afraid, sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them and a voice that came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore. Save Jesus only with them. See, when, G, when you uh, get to a higher place where Jesus is taking you, sometimes it's easy to get distracted by what you're seeing. It's easy to focus on all the wrong things because we get confused at what we are seeing instead of why we're seeing it. Did you hear that? We get confused by what we're seeing. We don't allow ourselves to understand why we're seeing it. Notice Peter. He said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let us make. So picture this. Jesus is, has illuminated himself to you. You've seen him in ways that you've never seen him before. You see this guy and this guy, there's, this one's supposed to be dead. This one got carried out, uh, caught up in a whirlwind. And you got these two guys and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you think you should be talking. Is there anything more 2022 than that? Instead of standing in awe of what he's seeing, he said, let us. Now, let me put that in good, plain terms. He said, let us. That's pretty easy, right? Daniel, come here. Seth, come here. Stand right there. This is Daniel. By himself. He says, I, right, and me. Him, him's alone. Okay? This is Seth. He's alone. Right? He says, I and me. When he's talking to him, he says, you. Right? Thank you for being a part of this illustration. Watch this. Hymns comes with hymns. And now they're us. And, in te and if we took a picture today, instead of a selfie, this would be an ussy. Amen? Because, listen, Peter said, not I want to build something. He said to Jesus, we're going to build this together. So what he's saying is, he missed out on what he was seeing, so he includes Jesus in what he misunderstood. Come on now, Christian. How many of you have taken your viewpoint of what you think should happen? Oh, no, no, no. And took I and made it an us. Because I is all messed up. We got to get Jesus on the messed up train with us. And I am not focused on the things that God wants me to see. Therefore, I'm going to bring Jesus into the area that I want him to be in. And listen, thank you guys. The, listen, you, listen, they messed, or he messed what he was seeing. He missed what he was seeing. God wanted to show him more, but he was so focused in on the two jokers. 
that helped establish what he was living in in the religious world that he missed or missed the one who was going to deliver him from that world. He wanted, Jesus took him up higher so that he could see something that nobody else seen before and he missed it. I'm going to say this. How, I'm going to ask you this question. How many times have, has Jesus taken you to a place that you'd never been before and you missed what he was trying to show you? All, all I can see is the trials, preacher. You missed when he delivered you from the trial. When he was proving his point. May I say this? Many of us are still going through the same trial over and over and over again because we never learned from it. We never grew beyond it. Oh, man, It's not where I wanted to go, but I feel like somebody needs to see it. So, so what happened next? What happened next? God spoke. God had to take and put Peter in perspective so he could clarify what he was supposed to see. He said, this is my beloved son. Peter, listen, you're running them lips again, boy, when you should be shutting that mouth. You got two ears and one mouth. Shut the mouth, open the ears. Amen? Amen. You should be listening twice as much as you've been talking. But Peter, your mouth never stops. Anybody in here like that? There's a, there, there's a woman here who says, I know of a man who fits that description. Hey, ma'am. <laughs> you see, but if he, Jesus said, or God said about Jesus, he said, he said this is my son. And I let him bring you up here. And instead of listening to that one and that one, hear him. Wow. How many times have we come to a place where Jesus wants to take us that higher ground? To show us more than we've ever seen before? To let us hear things that we've never heard before? But we're too busy asking for something to hear what he has already prepared for us. It is in these moments that we need to say, God... Put my life into perspective. Clear some things up. And when he does, it's going to sound like this. And when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore save Jesus. They looked over here where Moses was, and they only seen Jesus. They looked over where Elijah was, and all they seen was Jesus. Listen, all they could see was Jesus. Anywhere they looked, everything was erased. It was only Jesus. When we get to the place where God wants us to be, listen, you won't see the bills anymore. You won't see the pain anymore. You won't see the problems anymore. You'll only see Jesus. Jesus will be the answer. He will be the question. He will be at all that you need. Only Jesus. I wonder, are you willing to commit to Jesus to take you to higher ground where you'll see Him and only Him? But where do I fit in the situation, preacher? No, 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 no. If you really want to go higher, I don't matter. Only Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I, and I don't know why you come to church. Be straight with you. I don't go to church to be miserable. I, I don't go to church to, to mess around, to play games. I go to church to sit down in this pew. Sit, I listen, sit in my little rocking chair as the choir sings. Take my seatbelt and put it on. And I say, God, I got out of bed. Mm. 
for more than biscuits today. <laughs> Take me higher. Oh, man. And then they, mm. then they start singing. Brother Chris starts jumping up and down. Next thing I know, I feel like I'm on amusement for a Y'all, y'all don't know what I'm... T- no, you've never seen that before? You go up there, ride the beast. All the way to the top. And the next thing you know, whoo, Chris is jumping up and down, slapping his, slapping his side. And the choir's up here singing. Ain't none of them had a, had a smile on their face when they walked in the building. But they got up here singing about something that makes them smile. Next thing I know, I'm going up, 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 and I'm down. And then I'm back up. And then I'm back down. Next thing I know, I'm on my feet shouting. And I'm glorifying God because God has been so good to me. I can finally see that all of the week's distractions that have overcome me are not worth my time, are not worth my uh, strenuous thoughts. Uh, But it is this. Jesus is worth it all. He made me get through Monday. He made me get through Tuesday. He made me get through Wednesday. Gave me a little booster shot there on Wednesday night. Made me get through Thursday and Friday. And then when Saturday... Saturday hit and I got in a mood. He said, hold on, get you some Krispy Kremes. Sunday's coming, amen. I don't know who you are this morning, but you came in here down. You came in here depressed. You came in here with something that, that you that on you that you couldn't get off. But I'm here to tell you, grab on to Jesus, honey. Commit to Him today and watch Him take your life that is at its lowest point and pull you up higher. And I promise you when you get there, You'll see him like you never saw him before. With every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. I don't know about you, but I think it's time to buckle up. Say, Jesus, take me for a ride. I'm ready. I don't care how, a roller coaster, how high the roller coaster is and how fast the drop is, but I'm ready to go. I don't care about the loop-de-loops and the spins. I'm ready to go, God. Yeah, I wonder how many people under the sound of my voice will do this. Will say, I'm ready to go higher. And if I'm going to go higher, I'm going to have to commit to Him to take me there. You're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. May I say to you today, this is your time. He loves you. He cares for you. He died on the cross to save you. You're here today and you say, Preacher, I know that if Jesus comes or I should die, I'm ready to meet him. Here's my hand. I want want to give testimony and say, Thank the Lord I'm saved today. Here's my hand. Amen. Maybe you're here today and you say this, Preacher, I don't know if I've ever been saved. I don't know if I've ever given my heart to Jesus, but I sure would like to know. Here's my hand. Will you pray for me? Amen. I wonder today how many church members, how many, how, many, how many Christians out there today will say this, preacher, I want to raise my hand and say I'm ready to go higher. And I'm going to, I know that I'm going to have to commit to Him to get me there. Here's my hand. That's it. Amen. Amen. I need to commit to Him to go higher. Here's my hand. Preacher, will you pray for me that I can see Jesus on a level I've never seen Him before? Here's my hand. Yes. Preacher, will you pray for me that I can hear Jesus in a way I've never heard before? Yes. Yeah. How about we do this? So many people across this room today, I wonder how many will step out of their seat and make a commitment to Jesus Christ to take them higher, to take them further, to show them what they've never seen before. I wonder how many will step out and come and make that commitment to say, Jesus, take me higher. This one's come. How about you? These have come. Yes. Take me higher. Take me higher. I want to go higher. Take me higher. I'm going to have to commit. I'm going to have to make that decision. I'm going to do so to let him take me there. These have come. How about you? still working on hearts still moving Just as I am, wilt you
就好。Thank you for being so good. I thank you for what you've done in our church this morning. That restorative spirit, God, that you have swept through our congregation. That spirit of commitment that has knocked our spirit of discontentment out. Lord, I pray that we have got a fresh vision of you today. Because you've been so good. Lord, we're so thankful for what you're doing around here. Lord, because you're awesome. And we're not, we're, 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 we're not eloquent. We're not good looking. We're not smart. But you got it all. Yes, and we're is. thankful to be a part of what you're doing. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Aren't you thankful you come to church this morning? Yeah. Amen. do want to remind you we have church tonight at 6 o'clock. And then we'll have a, a Wednesday night church service again uh, this week at 7 o'clock. Um, we'll, we're going to continue down the, uh, uh, it's hard to be hateful if you're grateful kind of thoughts. Amen. Yeah. And then um, uh, next week we're going to have a, a, one of my friends, Travis Curlock, come to preach for us. Um, he is a, he's one of the funniest people I've ever met. I've only heard him preach a couple of times, and I've enjoyed both times I've heard him. Um, I look forward to him uh, coming to preach for us. And, and then that night, we're going to have, starting at 5.30 that night, we're going to have uh, our scavenger hunt. Um, I'm, uh, I'm looking for, we got four people in our family. I'm looking for one more to kind of, to, to, just in case, you know. Uh, just I'm having tryouts, all right? So, um, you know, if you want to be on Team Bradley, who's going to win, <clears throat> we've got a, a three-step process. It starts, with, um, uh, a, a, <laughs> it starts with a physical. You've got to go to the doctor, make sure you're up to snuff to be in our family. And number two, uh, if you want to be a part of our family, you've got to at least be able uh, to run a mile and do 50 push-ups. Um, you got to be able to do that, and then, 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 if you make it through those two things, you're going to take the uh, take a test. It's the equivalent of an ASFAB, and um, if you pass that, then you can ride in our um, our uh, Toyota Sienna and uh, win the scavenger hunt with us. So, hope you want to come join our family. Um, I, I say all that to say this: it doesn't matter if it's a family or if it's a bunch of friends who wants to get together, or a couple of families that want to be a, just riding the same vehicle, uh, anybody is invited. If you want to bring your friends who's never been to our church and you want them to experience the, the craziness of Truth Baptist Church, bring them out, okay? Um, and there will be uh, prizes, amen? Now, is you guys are flat today. Is there food, food involved? Uh, you bring your own snacks because you're going to be driving. And you, the, you, if you want to sacrifice time, you can go through a Taco Bell or three. And um, you can do whatever you want. Uh, just as long as you know this, if you get lost, you're on your own. Amen. Uh -huh. well, uh, we do have an emergency number in case you do get lost. It's 911. Um, now, how do you that, dial that? Uh, you, it's 9 so. one and then another one, oh, and then you go gosh, there. Man, that, there'll be a, a, somebody who answers the that's phone. That's amazing. And uh, what they'll a find concept. it. Uh, I do I'm need to more. say this, and I'm done. I am completely going to turn it over to Brother Chris, and he's going to do, do something. something. Um, the, we, we had a poll that was out on Facebook and uh, the, the, the church band app uh, for Coco and Caroling. Well, by unanimous, say that right. Where are they unanimous from? Unanimous decision, huh? Where are they from? Campbell's Creek, Deep Creek. Oh, okay. Deep, Coco Deep and Carol. I've uh, met up near them. Putney. Coco and Caroling. Mm. Um, she, they're, they're twins. They'll be there. Um, gosh, Chris, I just want to get through this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> we are going to do this by unanimous decision. Um, I will say this. I need three people to drive 
trucks um, that have trailers on them. So I need three trailers, three trucks, and three drivers. So pray about it. Let the Lord lead you. And if he doesn't lead you, I'll call you. Um, uh, and, and Valen told you. But we're going to need that, and, and we're going to get a, get a playlist together to sing. Uh, That's awesome. This little light of mine and stuff like, you know, Christmas carols, all of that stuff. Um, and, and just enjoy that time together, and we'll have hot chocolate here uh, before we go and then have cho- hot chocolate uh, to fill up before we leave uh, to go home cause, so that we're, we're cold and then we get warm to get cold again. All right, Brother Chris. Cold, cold heart. Are we going to do the parade? No, that's what this is in lieu of the parade. Okay. Hey, I want everybody to give a great big hand to them two gentlemen. Stand up back here, guys. Stand up. Steve and Jason. Three. Three. Yeah. Stand up. I want you to give them a wonderful uh, hand clap because we, we don't even know they're back there. And they do an awesome job. I appreciate them from the bottom of my heart. Thank you again. <laughs> Father, thank you for letting us to be here in your house today. It's, the message is uh, one that we all need to take into consideration that if we're standing still, we're going backwards. We ask you to help us that we would continue to move higher, that we'd follow Jesus and that he would lead the way. For it's in Christ's precious name we thank you and we pray. And all God's children said, amen. Be safe.